Join us as we take a look at a fantastic relic from White Dwarf's past. These are two of the most iconic posters ever given away by Games Workshop. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. All right, welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here once again today with a fantastic blast from the past. This is the 40k flashback I've been waiting to do for quite some time. I just had to find them, actually. <laughs> uh, sometimes I forget where I put things, but I generally have the things I think I have, which is which is always good. There's nothing worse uh, in, in life, I feel like, than uh, forgetting where you put something or only to realize that you don't have it anymore. Either, either that or stubbing your toe in the middle of the night. I definitely hate that as well. But these are two fantastic posters, as you probably already figured out. And this is the iconic Land Raider schematic poster from way, way back in the day. This one here is the sister poster to it. This is the Predator uh, tank poster that uh, is also schematic that came out afterwards. I don't know. I don't know exactly when this one came out, but I can tell you a lot more about this poster than I can the Predator one. This Land Raider poster came out in White Dwarf, I want to say 244, 245, in the summer of 2000. So it's literally 16 years old as of right now. Uh, actually more than that because it's November. This is an amazing poster. It really kicked off their, basically GW planting a flag and saying, hey, we're the most badass miniatures maker out there, and here's why. Because we made this badass tank. They did it without the Lord of the Rings money. They did it without a whole lot of di different things. Just basically, they, they turned around their business model in the 80s. They really put a lot of cash into the right things, developments, etc., etc. And this was really a groundbreaking thing, and they were very proud of it, and they, as well they should be. Uh, following it, I believe two years later, was the New York Plastic uh, Rhino kit. So it took them a little little while to build up steam to get to that one, but eventually, you know, everything kind of took off from there when they got all that Lord of the Rings money, uh, windfall and everything like that. But getting back to this particular poster here, as you can tell, it's a little a little worse for wear. It's got a little tear in it, you know. Anything that's gonna be, it's got some tape tape on it here as well, you know. It's not it's not minty fresh, but it's still badass. I mean, this, you've probably seen this hanging up at various stores around the world, or you probably remember it from back in the day when you, you might have had it yourself, or uh, it came in a White Dwarf. Uh, again, I think it was 244, 245, um, summer of 2000. Now, they don't really make stuff like this. I think they did for the Bane Blade. They didn't make a poster of it. Uh, not that I remember was was for purchase. It may have been something that, that came out as a promo item, but I don't remember it was uh, available for general sale. But this was, this is that whole like how things work. Like it's just really cool to see because this was the first time they did like an interior kind of detail kit. And to kick it off, you know, they basically showed you, hey, this is what all the stuff in there. And a lot of it correspond to the actual model itself, which was pretty amazing. Of course, there's a little bolter racks in the front, you know, that you can see in the model itself. Of course, you can see the engine in the back of the Land Raider itself, the actual kit. Some of the stuff isn't quite there, but some of the control panels and things are. The seats, of course, are the little doors and everything. You know, you can slide these open and see a lot of the interior workings and things. There, It really isn't this uh, Coppola section or anything like that but it is still pretty dope and then of course you got the machine spirit which also corresponds to uh, something on the actual model itself and then they talk about like uh, various different things here you know like you know, the cyclops class machine spirit the m32 cyclops because i guess because it has one eye of course and then it goes over all of the you know all of the cool stuff that you would see on this poster like all the basically breaking it down all the particular items. Now there's a hundred and hundred and one of these things, which is pretty nuts. I mean, it just really takes you a while to read it all and kind of let it all sink in. I mean, you got stuff from like the engine compartment to uh, a cutaway of the actual armor, like what all goes into it, you know, all the different things, just really dope. And then of course they've got all the different chapters because you know, they want people to buy it and put it in their armies like all the different chapters and a little like story about each one and what they did. And then you've probably seen people paint their Land Raiders up. I've know I've seen 
several people, several versions of these right here that came after the poster was out. And then you've got the uh, actual specifications of the vehicle itself, like its height, uh, its length, weight, all this stuff, armor thickness, power plant, weapon system, anything you would see on a normal military technical readout is right here. Um, I want to say this was made, it's actually <laughs> copyrighted 2000. I want to say Dave Gallagher illustrated this. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know who the actual credit goes to. I also want to say either he was the artist on the back here because this was the original box art. And when this came out, it sold for $50. And people were like, $50? <laughs> That's so expensive for a kit. And well, now it's 75. <laughs> uh, the other variant of it's 85, you know. And 16 years later, I feel like inflation isn't that bad, actually, if you do the math on that one uh, by the Department of Labor here in the US. It's actually not that far off, strangely enough. So people complain about GW prices, but sometimes they're on point, sometimes they're not. But the, the illustration, amazing, Imperial Fist just doing their thing, excuse me, Crimson Fist doing their things right there, Land Speeders, Thunderhawks, like all the graphic, you've probably seen this piece of art, but you might not have known that that was the actual box art when it first came out as well, and then there you see some action shots of all of the different things that you could do with the Land Raider, you know, have the hatches down, or, you know, just all the different things. This is a really cool, and like I said, a very iconic poster. Many a game stores had this hanging in their store back in the early 2000s, and I'm sure many of man caves out there still do, probably frame versions of it. And then next up is the Predator version of this particular uh, poster, or this particular series, I guess. This is as far as they went. They never did another one, but let me tell you what, this thing was just as dope as the Land Raider one. So this is copyrighted 2002, so I guess it came out uh, slightly after to go along with the release of the, the Plastic Rhino uh, chassis kit, which of course, you know, eventually they came out with the Predator version of it, which everybody kind of expected. So again, it's got all, you know, the technical readouts and everything like that. It goes up to 73. Uh, different ones here. Now this one isn't quite as detailed. Of course the Rhino is semi-interior detailed in the back, but you don't really have this forward command cockpit. And I actually based a conversion off of having the interior uh, detail done up. Now Fords were never released a kit or anything like that. Um, there's, it, there is an article on Spikey Bits, like a how-to uh, tutorial on how you can convert and have a driver in here and all sorts of different things. There's even room for a hunter killer missile um, using parts from the land speeder and such. Now granted, there's a lot more kits out there these days in plastic, so it's probably even easier and even um, the, the potential for an even more detailed version of it is definitely out there. But that being said, you know, let's take a closer look at this. So of course you've got all the technical readout, just like you would see on a normal, you know, military tech spec, I guess for lack of a better term. And then you got the turret variants here. Of course the uh, Predator Annihilator pattern here, the twin linked LAS cannon or the auto cannon version, which the backs are different based on what you take. Cause I guess they basically store the ammo back here and then grab it as they need it with the different shots. And then here it's just all powered by LAS cannons or by some sort of crystal Tom Cruise witchcraft magic. I don't know what's going on with it. And then extra rounds for the heavy bolters are stored in the, the aft of the compartment right here. And then they load it via these doors. Long story short, um, nothing like this is as detailed as the actual rattle kit itself. It would be cool to see something like that with the, the spinning copola and you know everything like that, all the little doodads, but it hasn't happened quite yet. And it's been a few years, so I'm not sure if that's something they might address in the near future as um, you know, rapid prototyping and 3D design becomes more prevalent, but hey, I would definitely buy a kit that was that detailed for sure. So that was pretty cool. Now, like you saw already, there was no artwork on the back. Unfortunately, not quite as cool as the Land Raider one, but still another staple of a lot of game stores out there, as well as man caves throughout the world. So that was basically it. So uh, if you happen to know what issue this came in, I don't remember right off the top of my head. And uh, it would be nice to know, I suppose, which issue the White Dwarf. Now you don't really see the White Dwarfs uh, doing stuff like this quite yet. Now they do some giveaways and things like that and we're ramping up into the new monthly editions nowadays. But, you know, it was cool to see there be reasons more than just like maybe a free giveaway or you know maybe a uh, poster or something like that to actually go out or maybe some new rules to actually go out and 
purchase the White Dwarf uh, in the past. So maybe we'll see that going forward. I would love to see some cool Age of Sigmar posters or something like this on a Thunderhawk or, you know, um, maybe a Land Speeder would even be cool or even the Storm Raven. How dope would it be to see a cutaway view of how a storm raven worked like because people are already like that would never work in real life and all that stuff and but you know what this is the grimdark half the shit that works in the grimdark wouldn't work in real life you know what i'm saying but it's just cool to pretend and you know really um kind of uh just kind of immerse yourself in that whole like um sci-fi universe i think which for a lot of people is probably why 40k in general is you know really so appealing so that's about it for this one i, I hope you enjoyed this 40k blast from the past on uh, two of the old giveaway posters out of the white dwarf uh, questions comments errors omissions please leave it in the comments section below and we will get to them as soon as we can deleted scenes bonus content all the interviews and post game wrap-up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net. Visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. The longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.